Hey superstars, welcome back to another one of my autograph videos where I doodle a sports ball player and bug them through the mail for an autograph. I have not heard back from the TTM council yet on my reinstatement of my TTM card, so maybe I'm good to go. Let's open up this pack of 90 Fleer. Dear Scott, we have noticed you have not used your TTM card in quite some time. We regret to inform you that this has resulted in its expiration. If you would like to renew your TTM card, please send to TTM legend, Gary Bell. Once you have had enough successful returns, the council will vote on your reinstatement. Very truly yours, the Media Marauder. Okay, I guess I'm not there yet, but very cool of Larry, the Media Marauder, to assign me a Cleveland Indian to draw. In case you missed my last through the mail video, I have been flagged as a deadbeat TTMer by the great TTM council and I have to send out for autographs from some legends to have my TTM card reinstated. The media marauder responsible for the bad backs of many postmen due to his massive mail days has assigned me Gary Bell. The Indians were awful in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s for that matter, but Gary Bell pitched in the 60s and he wasn't that bad. He finished third in Rookie of the Year voting in 1958 and he went on to become a four-time All-Star and got a World Series ring with the Red Sox in 67. But the best thing about Gary Bell was his nickname, Ding Dong, which I believe are the most underrated of all the Hostess snack cakes. Twinkies are okay, but I'm not making a special trip to the Dollar Tree to get a Twinkie, you know? My favorite are the cupcakes, which are essentially the same as the Ding Dong, but the Ding Dong has perhaps the greatest mascot in snack cake history, King Ding Dong. Hello there, young man. It's King Ding Dong. Now Gary here is not King Ding Dong, but he is actually his nephew, more of a Prince Ding Dong or a Duke Ding Dong or maybe Earl of Ding Dong. I'm not really sure how the monarchy works in the Chocolate Kingdom, but it really is a moot point because King Ding Dong has quite a few sons of his own. He's rather um, prolific, like almost Genghis Khan prolific. So Gary is pretty far down the line in succession. So obviously not wanting to wait around for a chocolate throne he had no chance of sitting on and tired of Twinkie the Kid's stupid antics, Gary made his way to Cleveland and became a Major League Baseball pitcher. I know what you're thinking. Why didn't he go to the Royals? That would make perfect sense, right? But the Royals weren't in existence until 1969. Man, I really want a ding dong right now. I'll be right back. There's the Earl of Ding Dong in his 1959 rookie card. I'm not usually a fan of autographed facsimile cards, but I think this one will look all right. Off to the mailbox. Okay, let's see what we got. Nice, he signed the rookie card in beautiful thin blue Sharpie, my favorite. He kept the doodle, which is perfectly fine. Uh, he did not answer any of my questions. I, of course, asked him if he liked the nickname Ding Dong. Hopefully this clears my name with the TTM council or at least gets me closer to start TTMing again. Thank you, Gary Bell. Thank you, Larry the Media Marauder for assigning me such a cool TTM target. And thank you guys for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. And we'll see you real soon.